coming from a non-technical background, how have you found the experience of, of just being in a tech company and, and um, what, what, yeah, I mean, what's the experience been like? It's been, it's been fun, it's been a kind of learning curve on one side of things in terms of having to get to grips with not just what the product is but how the product functions and how it works. Um, from my point of view in terms of going out there and selling it, I'm selling it based on its benefits and what it achieves. Actually a lot of people I talk to, they don't really uh, care or need to understand exactly how it works, they just need to know what it'll do for their business and, and their communication and stuff. But I, I need to understand what sits behind it, what it's capable of, how it's been developed, so I can sort of plug into that and, and communicate that as well. So it's been, it's been quite tricky. It is quite a kind of intimidating world, I think, from the outside. Mm-hmm. But when you get in, I mean, you know, I, it's not that different. The people are exactly the same as most normal people. Mm-hmm. They just spend a lot of time coding and stuff, <laughs> where I might go out and do other stuff. Yeah. But, you know, um, the cu- uh, culturally, everything else, great, very similar to my previous business, um, which involved some techies. It was film related, so a lot of editors and stuff like that. A um, lot of learning, a lot of quick understanding, and a lot of just understanding stuff that I would use with any way technology I would always interact with, uh, but just starting to get under the skin of it. Sure. Very achievable. I know that my brain is very much the creative side, not the kind of science side. But it's very easy to translate into layman's terms when you can see so clearly what the product achieves for people. Yeah. So the people who are watching this who are perhaps from a non-technical background, they shouldn't be scared away. No, you've just got to find a team and you've got it's all about trust and finding something that works. Um, and you know, I was very fortunate when I met with Paul. Paul had been developing this technology and could show me it working. Uh, so I didn't have, I never had any doubts that the technology was going to was going to work. Uh, it was then about helping helping Paul and together kind of shaping it into a product and working out which markets we should go for and then what what the benefits would be to those markets. So no, I mean absolutely go for it. It, it is the probably the only uh, one of the only sectors uh, unless you're in the oil business or something that is growing. Um, so it's kind of. If you're, a, if you're a kind of entrepreneur and you want to get started in business, I think you'd be mad not to be looking at technology because it's low start, low cost to entry. Mm-hmm. Um, there's lots of people who are, who are qualified and trained in the actual techie bit of it. Finding the right people, building the right team is the, is the vital bit. I mean, it seems a great balance between the two of you. Yeah. Would you encourage other technical people out there, Paul, to perhaps partner up with a non techie? Yeah, I think what you got to look at is, you know, you're looking at balance, right? Mm-hmm. So, as a technology founder, you know, you need to balance that. So you need to look at, and you need to be quite open and honest with yourself and go, okay, these are my strengths and these are my weaknesses. And any co-founder or any partner you want to get into business with, you need to balance that, right? If you both have the same strengths, then kind of more than likely you both can have the same weaknesses. Mm-hmm. So kind of, you've got to balance that out. So me and Sam are a great team, you know. From the, from that side, we we, we complement and we balance each other really well, and we don't kind of we each know where each other's strengths and weaknesses are, and we kind of play we, we play on that. So Sam, you, you know, is, and has ownership for certain aspects of the speech system and the speech product. So do I, and we kind of just get on with that, and we work really well as a team. Uh, I think for any tech startup, what is vital, and maybe this is the kind of answer. From this, an advice kind of question, but what is vital is that you don't stay just within the tech community mm-hmm. because you see a lot of technology startups where it's very, very clever technology mm-hmm. and people get very, very excited about it without really considering its benefits to the wider world and would other people start to use it. And one of the questions we ask all the time is, would our mum and dad use that? Would yeah. the bloke, yeah. how would I explain this to someone in the pub? Yeah. Um, you know, and if you can't do those things, if the answer is, oh, they wouldn't and I couldn't, then you probably haven't got a product that's going to be successful, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I think, so it's, it's almost, it's almost vital that if you're a techie with some cool technology, you engage with people outside of the tech community, and I would just similarly, if you're looking for a start to do a startup business, I'd say it's almost vital nowadays that you, uh, you should be looking at the tech side, even if it's not a tech business. So much of the tech side of stuff, social communication and all that stuff, you've got to understand how to use that anyway. Mm-hmm. So I think there's now becoming a tech aspect to every business. I think if you look at from my side, 
is surround yourself with the best people. You, you know, team is really important. You, you might have a great product, but if you don't have the right team behind it to execute on that product, then it's kind of a non-starter. So you know, I think surround yourself with the best people that you can, and really, be, you know, really make sure that the people you surround yourself complement yourself and the areas that you want to get into. So the other aspect would be to, if you are a startup, and this is kind of where acceleration comes in really well, it's kind of fail fast. You know, and don't be scared of failing. You know, if you are, I mean, I don't really like the word entrepreneur, but if you are a true entrepreneur, then kind of. You know, if you fail, then you're going to do something else anyway. So not being scared of that failure, you know, of failing it is, you know, is, is a thing to look at. And actually, people, as long as you learn from that, then you kind of in a in a much more a better, better place sort of going on. And like I said, I think be open, you know, and help, you know, be part of the bigger community. Definitely. Yeah. No. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your time. No, no, no. Cheers. Thank you.